today. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing, man? I uh, hope you guys are doing good. Um, and just, um, just came to talk about uh, Monday Night Raw, and I gotta say, Monday Night Raw, it is doing awesome. So, I mean, Monday Night Raw was very good. It was, it was, it was very good, solid. You know, outside from all the other craziness, you know, the the show was good. So, the show did open up with um, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton having a match, and practically the match ends in double disqualification. They get held back. It looks like they're building heat between them two, which is great. I don't know if Daniel Bryan's still a face or whatnot, but it just seems like, um, I don't know, it kind of just seems like, um, like Daniel Bryan is still hopefully still a face, because, you know, it looks like now Team Hell No, I think, has disbanded. Vicky finally disbanded Team Hell No. Kind of did an option what AJ did, kind of as general manager, you know, that's what it practically seems, so... Quite frankly, um, I don't know where Kane was tonight on SmackDown after him getting DDT'd on the mat. Um, I don't know. Yeah, he hasn't been, he's, he mysteriously disappeared from Raw after, I don't know what happened to him last week. I don't even remember, but yeah, he got beaten by Dean Ambrose by a count out, which kind of was an odd fashion, but still retained the title, and that's kind of a smooth way to, for that to come about, so... That's smooth. So basically, um, Dan Bryan and Randy Orton had their match end in double count out. Their feud continues. Um, then eventually later tonight, we had basically the street fight. So, see what happens there. Um, the number one contenders tag team match, um, basically, um, was the Usos, Tons of Funk, and 3MB. I wish primetime players win this one. That would be a great four away. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. I look at it. I look at the primetime players right now, especially. With, when they had their match, when Darren Young had their match against CM Punk, I, I, I don't know, they're very great in the ring, but I think they're kind of overrated by fans, the fans putting so much praise into the primetime players, um, I really like them more when they had AW, they make them, he, he, I kind of felt like he made them more of a legit tag team, because without him, he, they look so thrown together, especially, I still remember their few, I know it's been almost a year past, their few happened on NXT Redemption, before the remodeled N NXT practically happened, um, that's kind of strange, but, you know, same thing with Triple H Shawn Michaels when they had their ugly feud, but basically that's where the cookie crumbled, practically, so, so, um, basically, um, to get back on track, to digress, um, the Triple Threat Tag Team match was actually good, I thought tons of Punk were gonna win, but, so, when I rethink this match, I'm thinking, are they gonna get squashed by the Shield, or they're gonna be jobbing to the Shield, um, that's what I'm thinking, but it's great the Shield are actually kind of going all over the card, not just always in the main event scene, um, which I kind of, from what I heard, I think, I think I, I kind of agree that they shouldn't be in the main event scene trying to take over the company, and practically with Nexus, they, they, like Nexus, they were getting shoved, at, they started to come to a point where they were just getting shoved down our throats as Cena practically humiliated Nexus at the end, and they fell apart, but CM Punk did repackage Nexus, but with David Otunga and with Kelly Kelly as a tag team, they look kind of they, the CM Punk did a good, kind of good job reestablishing them, but because of his face turn, they quietly disbanded. It wasn't like the core where they exhibitly broke up, but that's for the most, that's probably for another time, but, you know, the Shield actually did great. Um, the Shield would do great against the Usos. The Usos look like they're trying to get into the tag team scene again, except they're not heels. They did start off in the company as heels, which would be kind of funny, though, to think, so that's where I leave it to that, so... Um, other than that, the Usos back in the tag team team. I'm a little psyched about that. Can't wait to see what more happens with that. Um, I think hopefully they do put on a great match, even though I'm thinking the Shield's going to win to continue their title run. Um, uh, but the thing is, I hope if, if the Shield loses their tag team champions, they don't just end up completely collapsing and go on, like, random losing streaks and stuff, like Tensai, Umaga, or other those types of people, so... That's practically where the cookie crumbles to that, so that's what I have to say. Um, yeah, so that's good. Um, next match we had uh, Caitlyn versus Oksana. Practically, Oksana tried to seek retribution after getting humiliated when Caitlyn just practically just nailed Oksana. Um, the thing is with her throwing and stuff, when Caitlyn is angry, you have to like really have to like be more aggressive and stuff. Like you have to throw and just slam her against the wall or something. That's something like Layla did with Michelle McCoy. 
Michelle McCool did by I mean that's what, and vice versa with Michelle McCool did to Layla. It's like it's like it's kinda like they're those types of people, even though they had the most heated short lived feud, it was like only like what, a week they had that heated feud. Even though that that feud had that slow burn as well when they were taking like psychology classes and stuff, they put it on intense match and they actually exploited their heats and emotions in that match, which was awesome. Kayla just throwing Oksana on the floor. It looks like she's trying to just throw her on the floor or something. It kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks like, it kind of looks like overly botched. And sometimes she falls down too, which it does look so botched sometimes. Uh, I have to say, I think Kayla needs to start training more. I don't know if she'll go, I mean, she does wrestle on NXT too. And this is the chance to improve her in-ring work. But I did see AJ against Caitlyn on NXT. I, yeah, I think NXT, yeah. I actually saw it on YouTube very recently, and they actually did put on a great match, though. AJ really practically doesn't really have to, like, get in her head or anything. I mean, they still put on a great show, which I thought was great, but unfortunately, Caitlyn did pull the victory over AJ on NXT for the Divas Champion, which I did see on um, NXT, yeah. It's kind of cool, though, so that's, that's I think, practically where the cookie crumbles. I thought it was great, though, but the payback, it was great, too. Uh, Caitlyn did tap out, and AJ actually did put on the great submission hold, Black Widow, Octopus hold. So, that's what I gotta say to that. So, uh, Caitlyn did had her match with Oksana, and Caitlyn does nail the surprising victory. I thought Oksana was gonna suffer an upset, and then have AJ continue to get into Caitlyn's head a lot more. It's actually good Caitlyn's winning at the same time, because I felt like they're trying to build momentum with her. And I think that would be, um, very great to see that build come up. So, that's what I kind of wanted to see happen. I really want that to happen, though. And Caitlyn get back into the Divas title scene again and prove that she's ready for AJ. But the only thing I really wish, though, because AJ practically is carrying the whole feud around with her mocking Caitlyn and getting into her head. And Caitlyn just getting angry and snapping and just want to beat her up. Hopefully, um, I'm a little patient about this, but hopefully weeks later, they're going to have Caitlyn practically um, do something to um, get back at AJ. Practically have Caitlyn mock AJ and wearing the little uh, short shirts that she'll wear covering her belly or the short shorts and have her skip around and stuff. I think that's something Layla could do because, you know, from, from the looks of this, I think Layla would be great. I think she would fit that great anti-hero instead of playing this uh, council playing her like just counseling Caitlyn and stuff have Layla do a little anti-hero type gimmick and stuff and have her just practically try and get back at AJ that's why it would be great if AJ and Layla feud because Layla would probably I don't know I could see her playing this anti-hero type persona Layla playing play anti-hero so that's what I gotta leave to that but let's see what happens from there going to the next matchup pay-per-view Caitlyn and AJ have Caitlyn try and humiliate AJ and get back at her so that's what I'm hoping happens Sorry if I talk about that too long. Um, now, moving on, we have um, the WWE 2K14 kind of revealed. It kind of feels like NBA 2K14. The cover looks so great. Part of 2K Sports. I wish it was part of EA Sports. I thought that would be awesome. But, um, oh well. Hopefully if they come out with another game for EA Sports. But they're probably just coming out for that one WWE video game. Because, yeah. That's kind of where the cookie crumbles to that. Because they used to have multiple NBA games on NBA Live, EA Sports, 2K. And then, same thing from there. So, seems practical. So, um, but nowadays it's like sports video games are part of just that one company. So, that's kind of strange. So, anyway, that's what happened. Basically, a promo with Jerry Waller and Vicky and Brad Max basically revealing the color. Even though Vicky was getting so much heat. The Rock is on 2K14. I think it's great because... He was in two main event of WrestleMania's two years in a row. JBL kind of like hit that nail on the coffin. That's why I read on Twitter, J-Dub's Twitter, and he was like, JBL, JBL actually did state it. I like that guy. He's blunt and he actually can see stuff that fans can see. And he is really there, JBL. He's a great commentator just for saying, he main event in two main, main event WrestleMania's. Come on. So, and it's kind of irrelevant for Mike Cole to bring up he was in number one movies and stuff. What does that have to do with wrestling? So, I kind of agree with that. But I wish j did brought that up. That old JBL said, but The Rock main evented two WrestleManias in a row. You got to see that. So, that's that's what I got to lead to that. Um, other than that, uh, we had, um, like I said, CM Punk primetime players. And basically, around, evolving around that is practically... Um, 
Paul Heyman, um, and CM Punk. I heard this is going to be a slow burn, basically, um, for them leading to SummerSlam, practically. CM Paul Heyman is going to reveal that he was, he did send out Brock Lesnar to assault Punk. And Punk is the guy who's kind of being on his toes. That's what I like about him. He's like the only superstar on the freaking roster is practically on his toes like he's aware of what's going on he, he he is a really smart guy and that's what i like about punk like are you behind this and he did the same thing with triple h and kevin nash involving them are you behind this so he kind of i like how he, he's playing really smart though he kind of playing that mental minded type yo are you behind this and stuff and pull off mic work and tries to be this kind of smart guy um even like just more cautious of what's going on so and he said he doesn't need help from Curtis Axel so basically the match did I don't know what uh disqualification or whatnot but Curtis Axel I think they got involved in eight the primetime players I think that's kind of where the cookie crumbles but Curtis Axel I think is going to turn on CM Punk during the tag team match and that's what I got to say to that I think and that's going to happen so that's why I'll leave it at there so then we have what is it? I forgot what happened after that. Yeah, I know we had the Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton main event, but I forgot something happened before that. Right back in Great Holly. Yes. So basically, there was a right back Chris Jericho few started to build, and Vicky kind of snapped saying, Excuse me, after they silenced, which was funny. So, basically, um, it, we're seeing a Ryback-Jericho feud. I wish there was a Ryback and Sheamus feud. I think that would be great. From my perspective, I don't know what anyone else would think of that, but for Ryback and Chris Jericho to happen, I think that could happen. I think it has potential for them to a good feud. I mean, that would be great, but Ryback and Chris Jericho wouldn't be bad, you know, from Money in the Bank. They did fought each other on SmackDown. Ryback did win, but... Right back, nailing out the great Kali, which was a big achievement, especially as a heel, to continue rising after getting thrown into the ambulance truck. Looked like he came back from the dead, like the dead man, so that's what I gotta say to that. It's kind of funny, so he comes back eight days after the ambulance match, and he still looks great, so, I mean, he still performed in the ring like nothing happened, so that's what I gotta say to that. And then we have the main event, Daniel Bryan ran you on a street fight. Oh my gosh, that was just like pay-per-view quality which was good for which was needed for raw especially for a three-hour show if you're going to keep having three-hour shows you got to keep building interest and that's the thing i think it was a bad kind of a bad idea for them to have a three-hour show because it's like it's supposed to be like an occasional event but it looks like now they're just trying to build more people and have more more like superstars involved practically so that's what i think especially danny brian randy will put on a great long match it's like that's something you could watch from start to finish because it's like Oh my gosh, power bomb through a table, or because it was a street fight practically. I mean, it'd be great if I was kind of anywhere to go either way, but street fight, hey, it actually hit the nail on the head. I thought it was great. It was like, it kind of feels like an extreme rules match, but street fight they actually put more aggression into it, so it was great. Randy Orton getting some, like, try to nail his, like, signature moves, and uh, Daniel Bryan trying to nail his finishing move, the no lock, and using the kendo stick, and Randy Orton trying to get out of it again, and oh my gosh, Randy Orton did type out, which kind of surprised me as well, it surprised anyone, and that's, that's what I like about it, it kind of puts some shock value into it, like, getting people, like, shocked, or reacted to, like, man, he just tapped out, and it's like, it's kind of like, man, they build, how they're building up Daniel Bryan, and how is he going to continue to rise into the scene where, I don't know how to put this, but, where he's back in the Money in the Bank scene. I think, you know, last year, Danny Bryan and Punk were kind of in the Money in the Bank last year with AJ, the special referee. That's where AJ starts rising, and she has so much charisma. But Danny Bryan, I think, would be great in the Money in the Bank, but I don't, I don't want to see him win it again either because he already established himself as uh, not the weak link or the role model or the greatest of all time, all that type of persona. So that's what I got to say to that. But hey, Randy or Dan Bryan did put on a great match. Hopefully neither of them turn heel. Uh, everyone's on the Randy or bandwagon of him turning heel. I don't see that happening. So basically that's my raw review. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review. Hopefully it's, sorry if it's too long. I just have so much to say. Catch you guys later. Peace out.